Greetings YouTubers, welcome to my channel. This is my 2002 Nissan Xterra 3.3 and like always it seems like I'm always working on it. That's because if you work on your vehicles and put a little bit of money into them they will not let you down generally. So what we're doing now is we are going to be replacing the upper and lower ball joints on this 2002 Nissan Xterra. And we've got our ball joints kind of set up over here. I'm going to show you what we have. Now I paid about $30 free shipping online for these. These are aftermarket. You can buy anything you want. Now uh, what I've noticed here on sometimes on these aftermarkets like the upper ones here. These are press in. They do have grease fitting here so you just simply take your grease fitting here and your carter pin and you just kind of screw this into the bottom. And there's a little bit of grease in there but of course you always want to put more when you put that on. Now here are the lower ones and sometimes these will make you scratch your head. <laughs> Especially with aftermarket parts you can see there's a place here that they started to go ahead and put a uh, place where you can actually put a grease fitting. So I took my drill bit and a drill and tried to drill it out. Pretty hard steel and I thought nah you know what I think the best thing to do is just pop this boot here off pack more grease in behind it and there's a little spring there's a little wire here like a little Oh, it's twisty wire. Put a screwdriver in there and just pop this off, pull this down, and go ahead and pack it with some good old grease like I have right here, some high temperature uh, grease, and that'll take care of that. So I'm not sure what was going on with that. The upper ones, I will be able to go ahead and grease these once I put them on. So the bottom ones, uh, you got this big nut here that you uh, spin. Kind of interesting how Nissan did this, and you can turn this here and pop these out and pop the new ones in, and you're good to go. So, before you do that, go ahead and pull this boot off. Pack it with lots of grease in there. You won't have to worry about greasing it no more. It should last the uh, lifetime of the vehicle. So, I kind of wanted to touch on that. So, what I've got to do is go ahead and uh, get the wheel off. We're going to go ahead and kind of pull this apart here. And I'll show you step by step how to get everything out of the um, hub, the bearings, and all that. The lock keys and all that. And we'll start pressing this in and pressing them out and get our new ball joints in. So you'll have a really nice steering vehicle with no more play and hopefully no more clunks and rattles if you even have that. All right, so one of the first things we've got to do is go ahead and get this centerpiece here off. Now, I've already made a mark right here just so I know how to put it back together. You don't have to. It's not really that important, but it does make life a little bit easier. Now, on these here, I am using a Torx bit T40, but you're really supposed to use an Allen socket. Mine is missing. I don't know where it is, but if you've never had these off, take a hammer and tap on them before you try to break them loose because if you're using something like I'm using here you will break these uh, so just so you know so I've already had these off before in an earlier video when I was working on the uh, CV axles so these should come off fairly easy and of course to help you I'll put a screwdriver right there so that does not turn now we can start breaking these loose So we've got all those bolts pretty much out and we're going to put these off the side. Make sure you have a nice, decent, clean place to put all these pieces. Now we'll just simply pull this off and if you've got grease in it, there's going to be a lot of grease, so be aware of that. And also when you put this back together, make sure you pack a little grease in it. And you can see I've got plenty of grease in mine. And now we've got to take a little clip ring out. And you'll probably have to go in here with your cloth and kind of clean it out a little bit kind of figure out where it is but there's a little clip on this axle right uh see right down in here that we have to pop out so let me get my clippers uh my clip grippers i should say all right i think you can kind of see that i tell you it's nothing like working outside with natural light <laughs> i miss that but it's winter almost and i'm inside the garage tonight so there's that we'll get this clip out of the way and i'm just using some simple guys here that i picked up at the uh, parts store Actually, at the farm store for next to nothing, you'd be surprised we can find really good tool deals at. Pick all four of them up for about ten dollars. Of course, we'll have to have a screwdriver to help this off. It's a feisty little booger. All right, of course, we've got to get it past the second. 
place right there. There's two places, one back here and one right here that's just going to slide over. So we'll put that off to the side. And now there's a piece here that we can just go ahead and slide this off. There's a little race, a little bearing, if you will, right here. I think you can kind of see that right there. That goes on the outside, so you can see it moving around. Uh, don't lose that. Put that off the side. All right, so we're almost down to the nitty-gritty, and uh, some of you might know who the nitty-gritty dirt band was. I don't know. There is a little Phillips screw right here. You'll probably have to take your finger and wipe off some of the grease, but it's there. Go ahead and get this out. This is the retainer, the lock retainer. And it's a little screw. Don't lose this. This is kind of unique. And there it is. We'll put this off to the side. And now we can go ahead and take this piece here off. Uh, you can use a couple of screwdrivers or whatever, but I'm going to use this old broken magnet that I got. And pull this piece here off. And we'll put that off to the side. And this is what kind of locks this, keeps this bearing tight. There's a little piece in behind here that we have to take off. What we do, we kind of unscrew it. You take a screwdriver and just go in here and hit one of these little places right here and tap it off. And out comes the piece that holds the bearing. This is how you adjust your bearing and all that. And that's it. All this is ready to come off. After we take off the brake, the brake bracket, and all that this will just slide right off so that's how you get all this off and there's a bearing here and there's a bearing on the back and there's a seal we'll look at that real quick but i have a lot of this information in a video that i did not too long ago on replacing the cv axles all right so we can pull this out for now and now we can go ahead and take off our brake bracket 14 millimeter bolt in the back and like i said i've had mine off so pretty easy to get off hey let me know where you're watching from right now So those out when the threads are in good shape, make sure when you put these back in, you start them with your finger. Don't just jam them in there because you will have some problems. You will end up stripping them. And Nissan parts are hard to find, especially for these Xterras. They're getting harder and harder to find. And you won't find very many of these in a junkyard, that's for sure. People keep them, they part them out because they know they can get some money out of them. And there's the other one. All right, let's get the brake bracket off here. Should come off fairly easy. Now, I do have a couple of frozen caliper pins here on mine. I uh, see the bottom one here is froze up. I'm going to have to try to figure out a way to unfreeze that. And as you can see, it ain't going nowhere. But the top one, no problem. So, what are you going to do? All right, we'll get our brakes out of the way. Of course, I'm going to need some new pads pretty soon. They're about 50% down. They got some cracks in them. And on the back side, we're going to get this brake bracket out. This is a 22 millimeter bolt that holds this on. I had to put some muscle into this when I first took it off a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to get this off here, and I've already got these broken loose. All right, so here's the top one. There it is. has a washer on the back of it. We'll put that off the side, and now we're going to grab the bottom one. It's out of the way. And there it is, the bolt, the washer. And off comes our brake bracket. We'll put this off the side. Now, you do have some anti rattle clips here. Uh, check those, you know, make sure they're okay. And now we're ready to go ahead and pull this hub assembly off. Put your hand right in the front here when you pull it off because this bearings like to fall out. And just kind of pull it out there. And see, there's the bearing. Check it later, make sure there's no grooves or anything, and repack it with some good grease. And now we'll go ahead and pull this rest of the way off. And on the back, there's a seal and a bearing. Check all that and uh, check the hub. And that's all there is to it. And now we're down to the nitty gritty here, so that wasn't too bad. All right, let's go ahead and get our tie rod end off. And I've had these off before, and I didn't put them on terribly tight because I knew I was going to have to take them back apart. When my parts came in for my upper and lower ball joints, but I've ran this bolt on and off a bunch of times, grease it up, do the same thing because if you put this back on, this whole thing starts to spin. You're going to spend way too much time on it trying to get this back off. And if you have to cut this off, then you're in trouble. You have to get another tie rod in. But mine come off really easy. All right, so there's that. 
Now I've got a ball joint puller, but I'm going to go ahead and just take my hammer and hit this a couple times. This should pop out. And when you first do it, you may have to hit it just a little more than you have to. And I've got a fairly big hammer, so I know everybody in their garage has a big camera, right? So let's hit this a couple times. One time. Didn't take much, and there it is. Now, this is my ABS wire. I had a problem trying to get the bolt out of the ABS, and I did not want to break it off. The other side came off okay. But there is a little clip right here. If you break this bolt off here that holds this clip off on... Uh, you can actually just slap this whole thing out, and this will give you a lot more clearance here to work with this when you take this hub off, if you can't get your sensor out of your hub, because these bolts will break off. We'll show you that here in a second. Now, the bolt I'm talking about is this one right here. I can put a socket on it. It will not budge, and when I'm turning it really hard, I can feel that it's going to snap, so I'm not going to bother with it. The ABS is fine. What you want to do is just get your screwdriver and pop these little clips back right here. This one here, you can see it did break off. It just would not come off. So, But I've got a zip tie that I'm going to put that back on with. And it should hold it. You just pop these out like this. All right, there it is. Like I said, this bolt here, I can actually drill this out later. It's easy to get to. Not that big of a deal. So now we have all this play here, this extra room to uh, put this off the side. And we won't be pulling on this ABS wire too, too hard at least. So as you can see here, uh, the only thing we got to do now is go ahead and take this bolt off on the top and one off on the bottom. I do have a jack up under the lower control arm here, and I have a couple of the jacks underneath the vehicle under the frame because we may have to lower this up and down a little bit. Now, if this is your first time taking this off, my advice is to go ahead and uh, just leave it up in the air for now. Take this bottom bolt off, if you can get it off, then spin it on just a little bit. Take this one off first, hit it with a hammer, and hit this. Then when this comes loose, it'll drop down just a little bit because if you don't, this whole thing will just kind of fall off. But the axle is in there holding it, so you might want to go ahead and put a little cloth in here just to kind of catch that axle so it doesn't tear up that boot, just in case this comes down a little farther than you like. All right, so there's the bottom one. This is a 27 millimeter socket that I got on here. I got a deep well, so this is a pretty big one. So. All right, go ahead and loosen the top one up. All right, the top one here, we've got a 7 8 wrench on it. And then we'll take a secondary wrench and stick it back here. And we'll break this loose like this. Ugh. And now we're going to get this one off. We'll take this one all the way off. All right, so this one's off. Now remember, don't beat on these ball joints until you get the bolt completely off. Because if you get them halfway off and you decide to beat on this and break it loose, the whole thing's going to spin around you're going to be, you know, a lot of doo-doo. So, that's off. Okay, so I've got my big hammer. I'm going to hit this top ball joint here off this, on the side and see if we can get it break loose. It's really a shame I can't get that bolt out of that ABS sensor. But maybe it'll come loose on the first couple hits. We'll see. Good. I don't have a lot of room here, but it worked. These ball joints are actually good. It's the lower ones that are shot, but if I'm in here, I might as well replace them all, right? All right, so we're on the front side here, and of course the axle's fairly loose, and I've got a cloth right here. So we'll hit this a couple times, and hopefully this will just pop right out. We'll see. Just about. Move the light and camera a little bit better. There we go. Just had to tap on it. <laughs> All right, it's out. Nice. All right, so let's see if we can get this out of here. With the axle still connected, we're going to get this off here and pop this down. I think there's a trick here. You have to kind of push down on this. There we go. All right. And tip it like this. And you can see how long this wire is. So this is nice to have it still connected and not worry about it. So we'll put this off to the side. I'll get a bungee cord here in a little bit and we'll figure out what we're going to do with this. And there's our upper ball joint. And here's our lower one. And you can see this one is in horrible shape. Right there, so. 
All right, so hard parts done. All we gotta do now is get our ball joint puller tool that I have and push these out and put the new ones in. All right, so our next step here is, here's our upper ball joint and we'll put our tool here and we're gonna spread this part. And you can see only one part of this moves. So, you know, you can't get the other part to move. So just take a hammer and a little screwdriver and kind of hit it right here, break it loose. Because if you pull on it too much with your tool, you can break your tool. And now, see everything moves and off it comes. Just like that. So, there's that. Here is my 21 piece ball joint puller set, press out kit, whatever. Uh, you can get these now for less than $100. And if you do a lot of automotive work, I highly suggest you go ahead and invest in one of these because a lot of times at the parts store, when you rent these out, a lot of times these threads are messed up and some of the parts are missing. So this is what we're going to be using here. And uh, you'll probably have to use something like this in order to get these ball joints out. And of course this upper ball joint, what we got to do, this is the new one. We got to put our tool in here and we actually got to push this upwards and outwards. We got to get something uh, down here on the bottom and kind of force this up like this. So this is what we're going to have to fool around with and try to get out. You'll have to probably come up with some ingenious ways because a lot of times with these bolts being very long, it's really hard to get something down here. So the idea right now, I think, is to get something kind of small and fit around this uh, boot right here. We'll pull this off. Maybe we can get something here, a big socket, and kind of just push it up out of the way. All right, folks, here's my setup. I basically have the tool on the bottom of this uh, down here. I just took the boot off, and I tried to get a socket on here, but by the time I put a socket on here, it really didn't have enough room for the top part of this here. And you can see it kind of almost hits the top of the fender here, but uh, with a couple pieces on top, I can actually see that ball joint now starting to uh, come out a little bit there. Now we got into a bind as I had a lot of pressure on. If this happens to you, just take your hammer and hit this a couple times, and you'll probably see it kind of pop out of there. And so if I zoom in there, you can see that gap we got there. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my tool here, which is a 7 8 uh, wrench, and go ahead and pull it out, take the rest of the way out. And it actually <laughs> came out better than I'd thought. So, so basically I just had that, this here on the bottom, uh, and the room to put that in there like that. And there's what I had on the top, and I had this piece here. Like I said, you just got to kind of fool around and try to figure out what works best for you. And there it is, came right out. This ball joint's actually good. I'm going to keep it, and I have a uh, boot and a good clip. Uh, with it, I want to keep but you never know what you might need on the side. So that wasn't too bad So we'll clean this out and we'll press the other one in. All right, so here's how we're gonna press it in I just got a cup here a piece on the bottom and on the top not a big deal I'll take this off for you guys to show you I'm trying not to mess everything up here But this is how I'm pressing it on you got the bottom of the ball joint like that. I've got this Guy here. And I got this one of the smaller ones here this is what these are designed for and this should go right down in here like that make sure that the bolt's not long enough that it's going to hit the bottom of this and also make sure this is big enough for this uh part here to go through and of course on the top i just got this take your hammer and kind of start this straight tap it in eyeball it and you can see it's kind of started there put that there like that and i'll try to get this back together with one hand the things i do for my youtubers all right, this is how we're going to push it. It should go in fairly easy. I don't see the see why there should be much issue. And now I'll grab my wrench here, and we'll go ahead and tighten it down a little bit here. You can see it going in already, so it should work out pretty good. And like I said, if it gets into a bind and it gets really tight, take a hammer and kind of tap on it a little bit. Once I find my hammer here, it will kind of help it. There it goes. Because it's easy to get these things going sideways. So, all right. Well, I think we're already in. Yes, sir. I think we're all the way down. And of course on top I'm using a couple wrenches, you know, the old wrench trick, one here, one here, to give me some extra leverage. And we are, we are in like Flynn. That thing is tight. 
All right, let's go ahead and back it off. Uh, put our snap ring in. And, that, and this one will be done. So, there's that, there's that, there's that, and there's that. And yes, so she's in. All we gotta do is put our clip in, our snap ring, I should say, and put our grease fitting in, put some grease in it. All right, let's get our snap ring on. Back in, and hand here, and get it back started there. There we go. All right. All right, perfect. I like it when a plan comes together. All right, that is done. We got our grease fitting in, and got a little extra grease here, kind of coming out right there. So she's full of grease, so we, uh, have this top one done, and now we'll hit the bottom one. Looks pretty good. All right. And there are some small places here that where they kind of take a punch and they kind of make little marks so this nut does not spin off. I'm going to take my grinder and just kind of spin this down a little bit. Uh, spin it down, or grind it down, I should say. You don't even have to do that. Probably not enough marking here to hurt it. I've got a big old pipe wrench I'm going to put on here. I don't have a socket this big. Uh, the, the socket size is right here in the description if you want to deal with that. So let me just go ahead and grind this down. We'll take this off. Well, like I said, it's not enough there to hurt anything. So now we'll go ahead and take our pipe wrench and see if we can bust that off there. All right, so I've got my pipe wrench on here and... Uh... I'm actually using a breaker bar on the end of the pipe wrench. I don't feel like breaking my arm today. But this should come off fairly easy. I haven't seen too many complaints about it. So here we go. One, two, three. Yep, there we go. All right, great. Let's move my camera so I don't hit it. The local Nissan dealer wanted $560 to change all these ball joints out. And I said, no, nah, I'll do it myself. So there's that. All we got to do is press that out. All right, so here's how I got set up here. I've got this uh, big piece on the bottom here where I can actually see it. And the bottom of the bolt, stud, whatever, will come down through the hole here. And I just have it simply just pushing on top of the ball joint. And uh, one other thing you might want to do, and I found it's this really helpful. Unhook your shock there and slide your axle back out of the way because really it, it's pretty close to this. It's kind of hard to maneuver. And actually I have a piece of wood just kind of holding the top of this upper suspension up out of the way. Other than that, uh, you can see here, um, it's ready to come out. So I set this camera up and turn it and see if it'll pop out. All right, let's go ahead and start turning it. Ugh, there it goes. I think it already went. All right. There it goes. It's kind of in a bind. Remember, take your hammer and just hit it a little bit. It does help it quite a bit. There it's going. Oh, and just like that, it's out. All right, let's get this out of the way. For you, so you can see it. And like I said, there's a setup on that. And there's a ball joint. And you can see it's pretty loose, pretty bad. So putting it in, pretty easy. Uh, just actually just get it started up in there and push it in there a little bit. And uh, well, actually, we'll, just, we'll probably push it all the way up in there as far as it'll go. And then put the uh, big nut on it. And uh, we'll call this side done. Remember, the new one, I've already greased, so don't forget that. Now here is my setup to push it back in. This was really tight. I almost ran out of a uh, bolt up here. And I got a cup here, cup here, a piece here. And of course part of the bottom of the ball joint is actually going to be sticking out on the bottom here. So like I said, you, you just got to do what works for you. And now we'll go ahead and tighten everything up. 
and it's a little tight here on the top pretty close to that ball joint but this is going in really easy it should for you should be no problem uh, getting this in here yeah, I think it's already in all right I will show you the setup here I'll set this out of the way and here is the bottom piece that was on there and here's the top like I said I just got this round thing in this piece here and tool set in there and it's all the way in you could actually probably push this up in there so far and spin this nut and pull this up but I think it's a better idea just to go ahead and push it on you got the tools you know why not all we gotta do is tighten it down and uh, boy this side is done all right well hold that happy thought just when I thought this was gonna be finished well not really with this completely tightened down this thing actually moves a little bit see that and I can actually turn this whole thing with a pipe wrench the whole thing turns the problem is there should be a spacer under here uh, I've even tried the other nut put it on here it does the same thing I tried to get a big washer I can't find anything big enough to put one up on top but it's not gonna make a difference because the way this ball joints made here's the old one uh, that washer actually has to go uh, down here on the bottom if you put one up here on the top it's gonna not really do anything any different it's still gonna hit that and keep it from uh, pulling this up anymore so the problem I you know I I don't know if anybody else had a problem with that that's the first time I've ever seen that even with a new nut it's okay I've checked the new one I've checked the old one here this is the old one this is the new one they're exactly the same I measured them but the problem is there should be a spacer here underneath of this so when you put that spacer in here it pulls us down just a little bit like this and when you put this nut on here it tightens it all the way down against this lower control arm it makes it nice and tight I have never had this problem on another vehicle I don't know if any of the Nissan people have had this problem on Xterra's so uh, you know I could put this in tighten it up but the whole thing's still gonna move a little bit so I'm not sure what's going on now the old one didn't do it because it was rusted in there so <laughs> but I can't really put this back together like this until I find a solution so um, we're gonna play around with this I don't think if I put a washer on the top of this here if I put a nut on here I don't think it's gonna really matter much but we'll try it but really what I need here is a thin washer here to take up a little bit of space to pull this down a little bit so wow that's the way it goes so uh back to the drawing board we were so close to getting this finished but hey you know if you're going to do this on your xterra this is something you might run into uh, if you run into this or know anybody else that has let us know in the comment section so uh yeah so much for this so back to the drawing board well guys sometimes i get really 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 lucky i went to the farm store tonight thought i was going to have to buy a washer and just kind of make something i went all the way in the back and i bought the last two of these shims that they had these are one and three quarter inch by 14 gauge and check this out exactly what we needed perfect <laughs> Perfect. I can't believe it. This is this really saved me because I was not going to put this thing back together with this thing uh, wobbling around. Yeah, it might have worked for a while, but eventually if this thing starts wobbling out, it'll wear that control arm out, and this thing will become a big problem, and you'll never get this thing off because this thing, the whole thing would turn. But this is exactly what we need. Now we go ahead and finish this up, put this on there, put that nut on there, and I guarantee you that nut, is this whole thing is not going to turn now when I tighten that nut down. So... If you need to get one of these here is the part number or if you need to order it I went to the farm store uh, tractor supplier or whatever he's only like uh, three dollars so man did I get lucky or what and there we go uh, she is tight that's what we want we want something that's nice and secure so now I'll take my hammer and I'll take a chisel and I'll make a few marks here so this will not back off but hey we are done so aren't you glad you stayed around for this part yeah me too all right all right so that's not going anywhere so all we got to do now is go ahead and put everything back together 
and wrap this side up. So we're ready to put all this back in. I'm gonna go ahead and put the axle and spindle in here and kind of watch me. Uh, I find that if you kind of put this on first here, I've cleaned the back of it off, checked the grease and everything, we're good. Put this on first and bring it down a little bit like this, then slide it up on the ball joint. It works out pretty good. Then go ahead and have your bolt ready, your nut, I should say. Spin it on the bottom. And now we can go ahead and push the top one down a little bit. It's up about a half inch. And on the top here, now when you do that, you can actually go ahead and push this control arm down. And you can actually start this bolt right there. I think you can see it where my finger is. Right about there, so it makes it a little bit easier. So all we got to do now is tighten this up. Put everything together and we'll be almost done on this side so i'm not going to show you how to do all that but i'll put all this back together and we'll come back and uh, look at the final product and i'll do the other side give you a quick look at it we'll wrap it up so uh, hopefully this video will help you out we're just about done here i wanted to show you this uh, reminder this little tip before i go any farther all i gotta do is put the clip on here and the hub cover uh, this little screw right here you see you have to actually turn this bearing and line, align this hole up. And when you put this plate here on, this bolt will kind of go through there. You have to kind of play with it. But make sure you got your bearing pretty tight. And once you get that uh, bolt in there, you're good to go. So, uh, just so you know. And finally, we got a little C-clip back in there. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. It's in. Make sure you don't forget to put that back in. Because if you don't, your axle is going to go back and forth and make noise. So... That's it. All we gotta do is put our little uh, cover on, and we're done with this side. So let's go hit the other side. Of course, I gotta fix my ABS wire, but other than that, we are done with this side. This side is done. Uh, the top one pressed in, no problem. Got my grease fitting. Got grease in it there. The bottom one here uh, was no problem either. And I'll tell you what I did. Um, once I got the uh, big nut off of the old one, I put a piece of wood up under here and a jack. Just really sturdy this. I just took a big old sledgehammer and hit this a couple times and it popped right out. It'll save me some time from uh, actually using the, uh, the puller and all that. So uh, that's that. I even got a spacer under there and she's nice and tight. I don't have to worry about this side either. So I don't know. I'm not sure what was going on with those little spacers. But uh, that worked out really good. So we're going to put the wheel back on it over here everything and wrap this video up. And I hope this helped you guys out. If you're going to do your Xterra, my only advice is, is kind of plan ahead. Take your time, get frustrated, walk away and come back. It does make a world of difference. So we'll see you back here in a little bit with a final wrap up. All right, everyone. Just decided to go for our evening drive. And I uh, wanted to find out how the car was going to be. Curiosity got the best of me. And I got to tell you, Man, she runs great. It doesn't have any problems now uh, with the steering. I used to have a little bit of a problem where it would kind of pull a little bit when I go across some ruts, but not anymore. It's actually uh, doing pretty well. And I'm eventually going to go ahead and put new shocks on it. You saw the shocks there. Uh, they're good. They're just rusted and everything, but running really good. No check engine lights on. So I think I got a pretty good deal here. And like I said, I hope this video helps you guys out. So I guess that's going to be about it. She runs good. She looks good. Kind of hate to get rid of her, but I'm going to eventually find me another one. Probably one that has the uh, supercharger in it. It would be really nice to have. So there you go, guys. So until my next video, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you later.